Right, well, welcome back to the channel. Now, as you may not know, it is Mothering Sunday in the UK this coming weekend. And <clears throat> historically, Mothering Sunday is quite a big event. Uh, the rest of the world now has Mother's Day towards the end of May, when we have the Chelsea Flower Show. Contra dis disagreeing calendars, I don't know. Anyway, so I thought today's clip, we would talk a little bit about the history of Mothering Sunday, why it is that we began to give flowers to our mums on Mothering Sunday, and the kinds of flowers that we could do, inspired very much by history, because those of you who listen regularly will know I'm a, a keen uh, fan of the Rest is History podcast. And one of the books they talked about recently was this one. It's called Servants by uh, an old friend of mine called Lucy Lethbridge. It's a fantastic story of how the world of servanting came up how people servanted, how people served, I suppose, um, over the years, and I'm absolutely glued to it. So it's a really, really good book, but if you're inspired um, to have a read of that, then do. But equally, here is the story of why we give people, give our mothers flowers for Mothering Sunday. Right, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe, press the bell icon, and we'll tell you when we've got more clips coming up. If any of the tips and tricks I give you along the way are useful, you can always buy me a coffee, or better still, join my club here on YouTube, which is great fun and full of lives and all sorts of extra bits and pieces. Anyway, enough of that. On we go with the story. So Mothering Sunday is the Feast of Mother Church, and it always falls on the fourth Sunday of Lent, exactly to the day three day three sundays before easter sunday and in the far off distant past it was the feast of mother church and so it was a day when uh one thought about uh mothering and of course mary mother of jesus so think on how many months is it between now and Christmas? It is about nine. And so the Feast of Mothering in the church is now because it is about time of the Annunciation, or not the Annunciation, but if Mary were to give birth on Christmas Day, then she would be falling pregnant about now. I hate the phrase fall pregnant. I think you should leap pregnant, grow pregnant, not fall. Anyway, that's a whole nother story. Back in the far off distant past, or perhaps the 19th century, when big houses and even quite modest houses had servants working in them, those big houses would have young girls, as young as 11, 12, 13, sent to work and they would start off as scullery maids and tweenies. They would start very low in the pecking order and they would work their way up. You can imagine if you were servant class and you were 11, 12, 13, you'd be this high. Your little girl, proper little girl. My daughter is 13 and she's, you know, 21st century 13 year old. So she's five foot six, seven, eight. But these kids would have been really dinky and they would have been sent off to work in big houses. And of course, Easter was a big occasion in a big house. So uh, the servants wouldn't get any time off. Instead, they were given the day off on Mothering Sunday to go home and have Sunday lunch after church. They'd be allowed to go and see their mums and celebrate Mothering Sunday. And on the way, these young girls, and perhaps the boys too, would pick a posy from the hedgerow to give their mums. They wouldn't have picked 
big fancy bouquets of garden flowers. They would have picked what little they could find. Here we are, mid-March, and we've had a cold winter. A little cold patch has held everything back. We're way back, not nothing like as far ahead as we were this time last year. And so what I thought I might do is I'm going to walk around the garden. I've got nothing particularly. Uh, none of my crops are in flower at this stage. But I do have little tiny things in the hedgerow. So let's go around the garden and make a tiny mothering Sunday posy. So this is a miniature 30 stem challenge for you. There's a hashtag 30 stem challenge. And if you share your 30 stem challenges on your Instagram and tag me, I will share some of them on my stories as we go. Now, first of all, let's think about containers. What might we use for miniature vases? Well, how's that? A sweet little sherry glass. Very pretty, lifts the flowers up and they can have a little, a little sing up here. So that's an option. This I love. This is a candlestick, but it's got a hole in it to put the candle in and would make a very nice, rather solid based vase. So if you were making, if this little clip inspires you to make something really tiny, that might go on a breakfast tray for Mothering Sunday, if you're taking up a boiled egg and soldiers and a cup of coffee to your mum or grandma or whoever. I'm fully expecting this, by the way. <laughs> then this would be really good because it's not going to fall over, whereas this is a bit fally overy on a tray, but this would be just right on a tray. Um, a little cup like this. Sweet quite wide in the top, so you might need quite big flowers, but that's a nice idea. Or, this needs washing, a little mug. This is a uh, Emma Bridgewater mug, and um, it's D. And so it might be a child's, you could have a child's christening mug and you could put a little tiny bunch of flowers in it and take it, take it on the tray up for breakfast. Or, <laughs> I've got lots of options. I love a dink. You know, those of you who've been watching for a while will know I, I do. I do love a dinky little thing. Sweet little tiny shot glass with painted flowers on it. That would be very nice, I think, with a tiny bunch of flowers in it. And this I love. This one of my children gave me years ago. And it is a shell vase. Look how sweet this is. It's tiny little vase. And it's got, you can put one little flower, so you can fill it with water, fill it with water here, and then it's got a little tiny flower frog to hold the flower in place. So that would be sweet. So let's go foraging around the garden, see what we can find. 30 stems is going to make a 30 stem posy, but it's still going to be tiny, tiny, tiny. Still going to be small enough to fit in one of these. Let's not get anything too enormous and let's um, take it back, bring it back in here and we'll make a tiny posy. And then hopefully I'll inspire some tiny posies to go on breakfast trays on Sunday or even just be delivered like a little tiny thing. It's not about the money you spend, it's about the time you spend, surely. Come on then, let's go. So here's your first tip. If you're going out to cut things and you know they're going to be quite short stemmed, and some of these are going to be really, really tiny, then don't take a big bucket full of water, but you can put smaller containers in the bucket and pop your little stems in the smaller containers so that they don't get lost. And I'm gonna start with foliage because that will also give a nest, if you like, particularly in that big vase for the smaller stems to sit in just while I'm carrying the bucket around. So I think that the point of the exercise here is to go around the garden looking for really tiny people. So these tiny little cyclamen would be great in a miniature posy. And remember to look up because you might have blossom. This wild cherry always flowers just in time for Mothering Sunday.
I'm getting rather grandiose ideas now and cutting rather a lot. <laughs> oh dear. I've got lovely um, Pittosporum black th uh, Tom Thumb, which this lovely aubergine colour. I've got some very dinky little daffs. The lovely wild cherry blossom. Curly whirly willow. I love the zingy green with the dark red. Very exciting. And here I'm just shoving the many old how in a jar for the moment, but the foliage is providing enough of a nest in the jar, tea cake, <laughs> to um, stop the cyclamen and the little people falling into the water. And I've chosen some tiny headed daffs because I'm making tiny arrangements, not nothing too big. Now, as you go round looking for um, ingredients, Watch out for good looking emerging foliage. Here is my black elder, a plant of beauty beyond compare. The foliage is the most incredible dark red color. It is very important. If you're going to cut elder, you must ask it loudly and clearly whether it will mind. I do this every time. It's the law, you have to say. Do you mind if I have a couple of stems? And so far, it has never said no, although once I was stung quite badly by a nettle as I was cutting elder and I stopped. Look, so here's the elder and look at the lovely color. Isn't that a great color? And can you see the beginning of the elder flower, which will be out in May? This is really, and this is a great time of year to cut it because it'll come out in the vase and the foliage isn't floppy so it's like a surprise in the arrangement whereas if you cut it later in the year it tends to be a bit floppy i cut it either now for the next maybe month or six weeks maximum and then i don't cut it again till the autumn when again it stops it's not so floppy but really useful and frames my dahlia bouquets i love my black elder with a kind of weirdo passion so I've spent half an hour walking around the garden doing my favourite thing, indulging my itchy scissor syndrome by snipping everything I can find that I look, find attractive. I have had, I have in my mix, quick whiz through, Pittosporum Tom Thumb, various small daffs, flowering, uh, flowering wild cherry, curly whirly willow, love it still at this time of the year moving on interesting uh fabrizio's been uh cutting bits off a big old oak tree he's behaving like a deer <laughs> anyway i love this i love the shape look i love the shape and the structure of the buds so i've cut some twigs because i might make a tree a few more daffs in tight bud but they will ping out because I have another project that's going on. This could be the first of the arrangements. Look, so if you took a child out into the garden and you let them cut some little tiny people to put on a tray with breakfast for Mothering Sunday, you can buy all the diamonds that you like. I promise you, the mother in this in question would cry in a good way if they were given this. If I were given this on Sunday morning on my breakfast tray, I would cry. I won't be. <laughs> Neither will I be, will I be given diamonds. But anyway, I might get the coffee. Anyway, that could be your first arrangement. Isn't it sweet? A few more bits before I carry on. Uh, a bit more on the foliage front. Grisselinia, lovely, just coming into leaf. Physocarpus darts gold. In America, this is nine bark. Variegated Euonymus japonica. Love a bit of variegation. Always goes well in all flowers all through the season. A few more daffs, just because I have, uh, this is all going in another project, so it's got to last for me. You would have to do it just for Sunday morning. And I haven't got, I've got a bundle on the hellebores, but do you remember the hellebore piece I made last week? So this is one of the hellebores I cut, I planted last week. 
and you can see it's beginning to form a seed head and so early, further down the stem I have to say I love this color look how green it's going further down the stem and if I pull these petals apart you will see that's a seed head developing. All the stamens have gone. Here, this one still has stamens. And so that might be floppy, but I have a plan for that one. Whereas these two, with their developing seed heads, they are absolutely fine. So that, those, that's our ingredients. Now, if you have small children, really do this on Sunday morning. Mum gets a lion, and then mums do it again on Father's Day, just to be equal. Whoever's day it is, have a lion, and everybody in the house, else in the house, goes out into the garden with snips to cut, okay? Whoops, I forgot, whole nother vase full of bits. Early, early Narcissi, uh, the lovely, really lovely, um, black elder, tiny little bit of variegated ivy and some rosemary because why not? Right, I'm now going to fill all my vases and we're going to have some fun. Right, now younger children may struggle tying knots in posies so we're going to hold that one for the moment but older children might love it because it can really give them something tiny but immaculate but tiny children might not have the fine motor skills that uh, they might not have done enough Lego yet. So what they might like is really very little. Give them something like, let's take, let's do this one first. So here you've got your little tiny vase with the painted flowers on it strip the foliage off a little bit of leaf and it'll just give the give the whole thing a base so that the flowers have got something to stand up in and i'm going to give it three but you could give it you know see how many you've got in your you may your garden may only give you a tiny bit but look because of the size of the little tiny bars, that's very sweet. So that's three stems of foliage in there. And then I'm going to literally put three stems of these scented, beautifully scented Narcissi. And they will stand up. I'm cutting them quite short. and I'm alternating them between the, the grisolinia. And there you have number one. How sweet, <laughs> on a scale of one to 10. I mean, really, on your breakfast tray, that is, I'm happy with that. If anybody brought me that, I'd be really, really, really happy. And there are some nice little buds here which will come out and keep it going for longer. So that's number one. I'm going to put it to one side for the moment. Oh, no, I'm going to leave it there. We'll do it all so you can see what we're doing as we go. Now, imagine a slightly older child. We're now up to six or seven years old. These, this is maybe two-year-old, okay? Do remember to wash hands. Narcissi are poisonous. Don't eat them. Be careful. Uh, but also this is an opportunity to talk to your children about this sort of stuff, so it's important. Um, so let's do this one for a slightly older child. And again, I'm going to start with a bit of, a bit of foliage. I've got to count my stems, so that's six stems. And I'm going to have one bit of grisolinia. One quite long piece of Physocarpus Darts Gold. One 
one piece of variegated ivy. And I'm just holding them in a little, a little bunch between my thumb and forefinger. It's really simple. I'm doing a big version of this. If you want to make a really big, lovely hand tie for your mum for the weekend, um, or for any time of the year, frankly, I've got a big hand tie demo tomorrow, uh, tomorrow night, Friday night, before Mothering Sunday. So it'll be the 17th? 17th of March. And I'm doing a big hand tie showing you the full hand tie thing with, and I'm actually going to make three hand ties and tie them together, and then I'm going to aqua pack them, pack them, show you the whole hand tie process. But this is, as a, as a sort of mini version, this is a very nice thing to do. So we've got uh, four stems here. I've got one piece of rosemary. Let's have one piece of the... Elder and look, elder leaves come out in pairs, and you can see where I cut it last year. So I'm just going to snip out the dead stick in the middle. And then I've got those leaves, that pair of dark leaves are going to come out. Strip any spare bits. And now I'm going to get, have more little daffs, sweet little daffs. So this is your very small child. This is your next child up. One. <laughs> I'm going to do them all different. Two. Three. So look, sweet, sweet little posy. Four. And that you can tie up and it's just a dinky little posy. So I'm going to tie it with a bit of raffia. You can use string or wool or anything you've got to hand. I'm going to make sure that the stems are clean. There's nothing dirty in the, on the stems because I don't, want the, I don't want the water to get dirty. Tying it up. So it's not a one vase 30 stem challenge. It's a one, two, three, four, five vase 30 stem challenge. So I've just tied it up and snip the ends off. My snips are not sharp enough. And I'm gonna take the stem really, really short. Okay, really short. Careful not to cut your fingers off. And look, that fits and stands up in a candlestick. How sweet is that? You see what I mean about the miniature gardens? I, whoops, I love doing this. It's a very, very sad person I am. So that's miniature garden number two. Again, little, if you have a little, that is something as simple as a, a little hollow, heavy bottomed candlestick you can make a tiny little posy and pop it in and that would sit really nicely on the tray this would sit really nicely on the tray too we've got to use these little tiny people i've got so let's make i'm going to move this back so you can see what i'm doing let's make something to go in d for dog and the same principle applies so this is your next child up Making another posy. What I'm going to do though is I'm going to, but now I'm going to go for a sort of colour feel and it's going to be purplish because I've got lots of lovely purplish and pinkish colours. So I'm going to have some of this, some of this. Look how the oak is like a miniature tree. Tiny bit 
of another miniature tree. I'm getting all sorts of ideas about miniature trees. And that's just three little stems, one piece of oak, one piece of grisolinia, and one quite tall piece of Physocarpus darts gold. And my, my dark leafed Pittosporum, Tom Thumb, has really struggled with this cold winter. It's been in a pot and it hasn't been very happy, but I can pop it in this mix and you don't see how leggy it's got and how straggly. It's just providing a dark underbase to the color. It works very well. And let's have a piece of this gorgeous wild, wild cherry and a piece of curly whirly willow. It's very tall. Never mind, we can do that. We've now got something really quite tall and it's going to go in a really small pot. So it needs a bit more base before I start adding any flowers. So variegated, little variegated uh, Euronibus japonica. And I'm gonna put another piece on the other side, just to, because you see how this is held up. This is quite a tight, uh, tight little um, container. So this is being held up tight by the container. These have all fallen out, but they're fine because they've got many, the, the Narcissi have got lots of different heads. So they fill up the space quite nicely. Whereas this has got quite a big top. So I'm going to have to make it so it sits the leaves of the Euronymous Javonica are going to sit on the sides of the D for dog. Let's have a little bit more of the... I love this variegated, variegated holly. And a bit more of the Tom Thumb. And I'm not going to add anything very heavy. I'm just going to add, I'm going to sneeze. <laughs> Beg your pardon. Um, I'm just going to add, because when something falls out of a jar like this, it's asking to go into the mix. So don't argue, let it. I'm going to add a bit more of the persicaria. I love the dark purple. and a little bit more of this wild, lovely wild blossom. And it's all pink and purple with a zingy green. And round the feet of it, let's have the crocuses. And they will open up in the mix and I'm going to put them together as if they're growing together like they do in the garden in a little bunch I can move them around because that's an ugly place for them to be there so they're all together and then the same is going to happen with the little cyclamen which would also grow together in the garden and they're going to go next just one round and they will grow into the arrangement okay and so will the the crocuses so if i have them sitting facing frontwards they will look very very sweet so this i'm going to tie up i'm going to put one more bit of the variegated euronymus under here and while i've looked i've remembered because I want to support, support everything. And I've remembered that I've got my lovely hellebore. So I'm going to cut the hellebore up. And because I'm using, they've got good um, seed head development. I, don't, I, haven't, I haven't seared them. I haven't done anything fiddly with them but I am cutting the stem up. So you see how I've got two, two there. I'm going to pop them 
into the mix as if they're growing and they're just tucking them behind the cyclamen. There, so the cyc it's as though they're growing. <laughs> But I'm not going to waste the rest of the stem. I'm going to pop that back in water and use it later. So again, tying this lot up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Seventeen stems in that in that little arrangement. So we're well on our way to our 30, aren't we? I always cut too much. Tying up. And again, I'm gonna cut them really, really short. Take off the spare. I love these snips, but they're not good enough for cutting Raffia. Anyway, I'm going to cut my stems off really, really short. Again, be careful of your fingers. This is where you can very easily cut your fingers. I always have to say, hold your fingers very like you're drinking a refined cup of tea. And then this tiny posy will sit very happily. Actually, I'm going to cut it off again. It's, although I cut it really short, it's still too long because, look, it's leaning a bit. I don't like it leaning. I'm going to take another, literally another two or three, centi two or three millimetres. There. That's better. And then I can turn it round... And you can see, and I can ha turn it around to fit so that the dog is still facing out. And look, there are little crocuses, which are going to flower in the warm, little tiny cyclamen, and one hellebore there, and another hellebore down here. It's my idea, of, this is my actual idea of actual heaven. I love it. There. There we go. So that can be another tiny, look at that, tiny little mothering Sunday present. And I've got still minute little friends. So I'm going to make a minute posy. And I've cut them in threes or fives in odd numbers, because otherwise, if you have them in um, even numbers, they, they become, they look like, they, they make squares and they make straight lines. So a little handful, look at that, little handful of muscari and a little handful of primroses. Tiny little hand, little tiny, um, Narcissi. You have to not be too, don't hold them too tightly because you'll bruise them and they'll break. And for support, a little bit of, can you guess what I'm going to do with all of this? A little bit of rosemary, a sprig, a little bit of ivy, a little sprig, but by adding ivy, it's quite long like this, I'm making the arrangement much bigger. And when you look from the top, can you see the blue muscari, great parsnip? They're going to grow. So I've got them tight inside there, but they're going to get taller. Uh, and a little bit 
of, no, I think we might be done. Maybe a little bit of, a little bit of um, tree shape. And again, you can see where I've cut here before. There is, I have snipped. This is the end of where I've snipped before. So I'm going to cut that off. And I tuck my tiny posy into it's tiny 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 but nice with a bit of height because of course the narcissi and the little tiny primroses would grow in the lee of a wood so let's have them in a little in the lee of a little wood and equally, we're going to have a bit more of this beautiful, very uh, beautiful elder. And a bit more of this lovely wild cherry. And a little bit more of the curly whirly willow so that's another little tiny posy tie it up tiny so tomorrow's demo is all about the big stuff if you ever think about you know whether you'd like to take up floristry or you want your how or you want to be able to buy flowers in a shop and then go home and make a lovely big bouquet. Or even you want to be able to cut from your garden and go home back into your house and make a great big bouquet. I'm going to do the big, big, big bouquet tomorrow. Um, and you can book yourself a place on that demo. But I like small is also beautiful. There we are. Tiny little posy. Snip the ends off. Good and short. And there we are. I might put up one of my little tiny frogs uh, in here. Hold on, I'm going to get a little tiny frog. Froggies. Here they are. Because if you put a little tiny frog like this, you see the pins and you can get them from Niwaki. And I think even my friend um, at Lou Archer, at the Archers at the Larches, she started doing them. So I'm going to just dry this off because a frog will, it, better to put it in and make it all work. Because I have put, so dried off my, I always wear an apron, and I put a bit of blue tack underneath the frog so that I can stick it down and it'll stay. And I'm using my snips because they're sharp frogs to stick it down. There we are, one frog. Put the water back in. And then I can just make sure that this little arrangement faces forwards and isn't going to go the wrong way. There we are. I don't want it falling, falling the wrong way. So there we have that one. Got rubbish everywhere. There we have that one. And we have the one that somebody could make if they're not very good at tying up yet. We have the biggest of them so far. My favorite, really. I love this one. Still got this glass. We've got the one in the, 
the one in the candlestick. <laughs> and I'm going to move them all away because I'm going to do something for this glass. And then I've got still one more little container. And I'll show you when it's all finished. But I can imagine if you were walking home from church in the 1800s, you could pick, you really could pick a, a posy like this. And that's what the servants would have done being allowed to go home for lunch after church on Mothering Sunday. They would have picked a hedgerow posy. And I think that's so gorgeous. Where's my little tiny, oh yes. So here, Here's my little tiny dish with its clever, I can put one stem, my little tiny dish. And my one stem is going to be as if I'm floating it, a hellebore. How sweet is that? I mean, really, scale of one to ten. And the stem is too long, it's sticking out the other end, so I'm going to take it off. There. I'm not sure that's going to take, make the journey to my delivery. It may end up by my bed, in case my family forget to do flowers for my mothering Sunday. <laughs> it may. Um, anyway, one more thing, and I've put a frog in this as well. Do you remember I said this would be sweet for a posy, and it would be, and I've popped a frog in there as well, and I'm going to make a sort of tree <laughs> because I'm planning that all of these arrangements are going to go on a round table at number one, Bruton, where I do flowers every week. So um, I'm going to put them all together, and I'll show you how it goes. So I'm going to make a sort of foliage arrangement that's going to go in here and then I'll line them all up to show you. Right, so here's my little tree. <laughs> I'm going to cut it off really, really short because it's got to stand in this arrangement, which is kind of stupid, but hilarious. Indulge me. squeeze it down onto the onto the thing it may not work onto the frog it's very heavy ah you need brute force to be a florist right so there's the tree right i'm now going to line them all up and you can see them <laughs> oh i do like my job and there you have it so your March 30 STEM challenge is actually a series of miniature posies with all foraged goodies from the garden. I challenge you to go and see what you can find tucked underneath and in the underbrush, the little friends who might surprise and delight they don't have to be big and they don't have to be showy, but they can be just plain lovely. And of course, if you'd like to learn how to make a great big enormous hand tie, then do come along to my demo tomorrow night. Uh, you'll need to book a place through my website, please. Uh, but I'm talking about making the posy, showing you in detail how to make the posy, a big bouquet, in fact. Um, I'm going to be aquapacking it and I'll put it in, show you how to put it in a bag, how to deliver it, the whole shebang for the big bouquet. And that's a skill that you can use all year round, not just Mothering Sunday. But if you have little people who'd like to make tea cake, tea cake's been whinging all day. Um, but if you'd like to make something tiny from the garden for Mothering Sunday, and if you have children who'd love to have a go and make something special, then make something like this as well, because, because, 
Why not? And even if you just do it for yourself, I would do it for yourself. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. What a long clip. I think this is going to be like half an hour, 40 minutes or something. Bon, go for it.